Good morning. Welcome those who are here and those who are at home watching from home. We're so glad that you're here to be with us as we praise God for all that we've been given and bring God our struggles and challenges of this week. For those of you who are new, um, please check out our website, our Facebook page, Instagram. You'll find lots of information about things that we do in our congregation. Also, to let you know, we will have a new member class in November uh, with a Zoom uh, that we'll do it by Zoom, and then we'll have a blessing in worship wherever you feel comfortable, whether that's in work, this worship space or through Zoom. For those of you who are here, we always repeat our directions, but I think they're important. Always three things to remember. Always keep your mask on unless you're taking communion. Stay six feet away from each other, another household, and please respond silently or just remain quiet during this service. Pastoral care, we pray for the family of Patricia Wink. She died last week and her funeral was yesterday. We continue our theme, Ripples of Generosity. One small change can have an enormous impact. Today, we will be opening our fourth Generosity Challenge envelope. From um, the first week, uh, we had uh, you bring in uh, supplies for school kits and for layouts for Lutheran World Relief. And we have put together 116 school kits and 60 layouts. So thank you for those who contributed to that. Yes, you can clap for that. <laughs> So this is a time of generosity, and we encourage you to prayerfully consider where God is calling you in your time, in your resources. Online, you are able to sign up and, and prayerfully think about for 2021, how you might share your time and resources with this community and beyond. There's much service going on in our congregation serving others. Last week was Crop Walk, and we had over 40 walkers uh, that did that kind of on their own in different places. And so far, I understand we raised $17,814 in, in the McHenry County, and Bethany has raised $4,116 so far. So we're in second place. I'm hoping that we might, I'm not competitive at all, but you know, I, I'm kind of hoping we'll get that number one mark again. 
the food truck was yesterday um, in our parking lot. Thank you to all of those who volunteered and made masks. It was so greatly appreciated. Really well done. Um, Carla and Carla Malpica and Kirsten Cannon are part of leading the Thoughts, Prayers and Action team in these efforts. And we served 69 families yesterday. So that's wonderful as well. Other opportunities for um, giving blood, a blood drive. We have a blood drive that will be happening on October 11th from 9 to 1 p.m. They will be bringing their mobile truck here and having it in the parking lot. If you're interested in signing up, go online with Versity and you can find the link on Wednesday Word. Other opportunities to serve, we are looking at caring for Bethany community. Karen Metter and I will be meeting this week to say, how can we pair up individuals in our congregation who are really feeling isolated and lonely? And how can we connect one another? Um, this is an unusual time and we really wanna care for our brothers and sisters here in our pews as well. In addition, we are collecting items for veterans uh, through the month of October, and we will bless those items in November uh, in honor of our veterans. You can drop off those items at church Monday through Friday from nine until three, or there is going to be a curbside drop off on October 23rd and 24th. So you can just come and pull up and we'll grab your items from there. If you're wondering what those items are, you can find them in our Wednesday word. So today, um, this week, Sashir Ayers went around our community and delivered Bibles to our Sunday school students, Sunday school students that are um, just starting preschoolers and also new members of Sunday school and third graders. And so we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do a Bible blessing. They're actually at home with their Bibles. And so you can see the different Bibles they get. So with, this is the first Bible we give out and it is for kindergarten through second grade. It's a hardcover, it's a great Bible. And we deliver it in this really cool backpack. And then we have this other Bible this, that the third graders get. And so it's really uh, very much the readings that we read and worship now. In third grade, um, I was a third grade teacher and it's a time where students read chapter books or their reading levels at a different place. So I hope you have your Bibles out at home for this blessing, and we will do that together. And Pastor Paul, I need your blessing because mine, oh, thank you. <laughs> so one of the ways we keep the baptismal promise that parents made on behalf of their children is to place our children's hand, children in our children's hand, a holy scripture to give parents and children a Bible for devotion and family prayer. This is an important step in the life of Christians, and we celebrate with you today this important step in faith. We ask God's blessing on our Sunday school children as they step into the word. We ask God's blessing on them and their parents. We bless the following students and their parents as they learn about the stories of God's the Bible together. Penny Engel said, Max Miller, Jacob Marks, Leah Statton, Autumn Helpert, Caden Smith, Jackson McKay, Quinn O'Leary, Nolan Smith, and Ryan Heisler. We bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, Encourage our families to walk together in your word. May they know that your word is a living word that helps and guides us through our daily lives. Amen. Please stand as we continue our worship with our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. 
Gracious God, we confess that we have held tightly to our material possessions. Forgive us. We confess that we have hoarded our time and talents. Forgive us. We confess that we don't know how to be rich toward you and our neighbor. Forgive us. The world says, give equally. You say, give generously. The world says, give just enough. You say, give as if goodness will never run out. Because it won't. Goodness will never run out. Help us to live as if love and mercy and provision are unlimited. Help us to live in the abundance of God. Please be seated. God, we know that you have been pleased to give us your kingdom. Make us generous as you are generous. You have been rich toward us with resources, with love, and with your spirit. Teach us how to be rich toward you and our neighbor. 
We understand that greed is often rooted in fear of not having enough. Transform our fear into radical love and open-hearted generosity. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you show forth your almighty power, chiefly by reaching out to us in mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace. Strengthen our trust in your promises. And bring all the world to share in the treasures that come through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading for today comes from 2 Corinthians 8, verses 1 to 9. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that is granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this not merely as we expected, they gave themselves first to the Lord, and by the will of God to us, so that we might urge Titus that, as he had already made a beginning, so he should also complete this generous undertaking among you. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. The word of the Lord. Praise 
Praise to Yahweh, you faithful people. Remember what God has done and give thanks. Yahweh's anger lasts only a moment, God's goodness for a lifetime. There may be tears during the night, but joy comes in the morning. I felt secure and said to myself, I will never be defeated. You are good to me, Yahweh. You have kept me safe as in a mountain fortress. But when you hid yourself from me, I was filled with fear. I call to you, Yahweh. I beg for your help. What good will come from my death? What profit from my going to the grave? Are dead people able to praise you? Can they proclaim your unfailing goodness? Hear me, Yahweh, and be merciful. Help me, Yahweh. You have changed my sadness into a joyful dance. You've taken off my clothes of mourning and giving me garments of joy. So I will be silent. I will sing praise to you. Yahweh, you are my God. I will give thanks to you forever. people putting their gifts into the treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. He said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow. Ceaseless praise. Take my
feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let it sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Every Wednesday, since the beginning of the pandemic, I meet with faith leaders in McHenry County on Zoom. We meet together to talk about leadership, to talk about things that are happening in the community, and to see where we might pool our resources together. This group is a mix of mainline Christians, Catholics, and Methodists, and UCC and Unitarian, and also Jewish and Baha'i, and Muslim and and what's the third one? One more. Do a Jewish Baha'i Buddhist and Muslim. It's a great group. A few weeks ago, I asked the question of them: What can't you let go these days? It's a question that comes from an NPR Politics podcast, and they ask this weekly. And the answers are sometimes just fun and trite but they're also serious and they sometimes make you think. There are two answers that I can't let go of from that faith leaders meeting. One was from Father Paul from McHenry. He mentioned that he got together, he gathered with other Catholic leaders and they were talking and they learned that high schools were planning, already planning on closing school on election day. He continued and said, have you heard of this before? What message are we sending to our students? Adults can't play well with each other. So students can't go to school this day because we're afraid of what grandparents and parents are going to do if the wrong person wins. Is this the world we want to live in? The second comment came from Pastor Karen, who serves at Fox River Grove. She's a Methodist pastor. She said, yes, you know, I was out with my friends. Karen is black. And she said, they look, my friends look a lot like me. And they started to talk about trying to find a safe place to be for election day and the week after. She said to us, I am telling you, this because people of color in this community won't tell you this. She and her friends are young, upper middle class black women with children who are going to try to find a safe place for election. They told Karen, 
we don't know where we're going to go. Maybe we'll go to our parents' house. Maybe we will go on a trip somewhere, which is a little challenging in the pandemic. Have you ever in your life asked the question, where do I need to go to be safe for election day? That is a question that is being asked by some people in our community. I can't let that go. People are living in fear because of division in our community. We can sure learn from the Macedonian church that we heard about in our first reading. It was a group of ordinary people. They recognized God's abundant grace in their lives. That recognition united them to serve in Jesus' name. They didn't have a lot, but their desire to spread Christ's love led to authentic and genuine care for one another. I have most recently heard posts and read posts on Facebook and Instagram that say we need to put Christ back into Christian. The Corinthians, in contrast, struggled with living it out their faith. They were divided and were inwardly focused on themselves. You know the familiar reading, love is patient, love is kind, that is often read at readings? Those words are actually intended for a divided community in Corinth. Let's try this out. Let's try using those familiar words, but instead of thinking of a wedding, I want you to think about these words being read to our divided country, these words being read to us personally. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Members of the church in Corinth, have been engaged in quarreling and jealousy and wanting power, and they were inward focused on themselves. The Apostle Paul reminds us that the Corinthians and helps them to see this community of churches in Macedonia that did not have a lot of money, and they said it wasn't about money, but rather their response to what God has already done in their lives and the desire to serve Jesus. It is such a time as these that we are called to live out our faith following the teachings of Jesus. You know, we say that a lot. We need to follow the teaching, teachings of Jesus. But I don't think we think about it and embody it in the detail of Jesus, that Jesus brought to us. So I decided today that I would present a list. I wrote a list of all the things that I feel that Jesus has taught us. And I wanna read that list to you. It reminds me actually of the words in Corinthian and the teachings of the apostle Paul. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. Forgive others who have wronged you. Love your enemies. Ask God for forgiveness of your sins. Jesus is the Messiah and forgives us. Repentance of sin is essential. Don't be hypocrites. Don't judge others. The kingdom of God is near. It's not, it's, it's not the rich and powerful but the weak and poor who will inherit the kingdom. What do we do with the divisions 
these days, I think a good start, an excellent start, is to follow the teachings of Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, we know we live in a divided world. Lead and guide us to follow your way. Thank you for forgiving us when we forget and become inwardly focused. We pray especially today for those who live in fear in our community. Mend our divisions. Lead us to places where people are afraid and help us to create places of peace and unity. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand as you're able. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please respond, your mercy is great, after I say, hear us, O God. Drawn together in the generosity of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We give you thanks for social ministries of the church around the world and for every ministry that heals, lifts up, and empowers those who are poor, oppressed, abused, abandoned, or ignored. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We praise you for the bounty of creation and a world of abundance. Protect the earth from all who would devour its resources. Create and strengthen sustainable communities who honor your creation with love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give you thanks for leaders who seek peace for all nations and lead efforts toward greater justice. Accompany all who suffer the wounds of war with veterans who bat carry battle scars from the past and all who promote peace today. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We praise you for the plentiful harvests and generous hearts. Send needed resources and caring neighbors to all those in need. We pray for refugees, orphans, widows, those unemployed, those suffering abuse, and all who are in need. Restore to health all who are sick in any way, especially our president and all those who, suffer, who are suffering from COVID, and also those on our continued care list and those we name aloud in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We praise you for the missionaries who share your love in new communities and bring compassion for all. Continue to raise up missionaries for lives of service in your name. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the health and safety of students, teachers, and faculty going back to school this week. May this be an enriching time for all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give you thanks for the saints of this congregation who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us, especially Patricia Way. Comfort all who grieve and lead us by their example until you gather us in your heavenly home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So we are in the fourth week of generosity, and we'll be opening our fourth envelope, and we have a video that is done by our confirmation family, some of our confirmation families talking about how they see generosity in their home. Why is giving important to our family? Why is giving important to our family? Our family has always held the belief that it's just as important to give of our time and talent as it is to donate financially. Giving is important to us because we want to help others. Sure, we're so fortunate to have. Giving is important 
to our families so we can help the community and give back to others. And it's good for the community and it makes us feel good too. Because we show love to others, especially the poor. And we can share God's gifts to us with others. This poster is an example of some of the many ways that we volunteer within our community and our place of work. Because we know we're fortunate and that we would like to be able to share that with others. To be a part of something bigger and to be better people. Very nice. So, Aileen and Isaac, could you come on up? And then Morgan and Paige, Peyton, you're right. You're welcome. Others are welcome to come up, but we just want to social distance you. Can you come up and climb up here and sit up on there? Let's see if Aileen can get up there. There we go. Nice. This is uh, for you. And I want you to open it up and see what's in there. there you got a container do you know this word culvers, culvers yes and there are two tokens in there one is for you and one we want you to share with someone else do you think you could do that yeah so we're going to open, I'm going to open this envelope for this week. And it says, pay it forward for our challenge this week, buy a stranger fast food. How do you do it? Step one, go out to eat or drink somewhere that has a drive through Culver, Starbucks, Country Donuts. Step two, order your food and drink and pull up. Step three, tell the cashier that you would like to pay for the people behind you in line. And if you'd like, you can say, Bethany Lutheran sent me and pay. So that's your challenge this week. So you need Isaac and Aylin to talk mom and dad into going to Culver's because you have some tokens for ice cream. And you can pay for the, you can pay for mom and dad's ice cream or the person behind you or whatever that is. But you got to say, we need to go to the Culver's. Do you think you can do that? Okay. So let us pray. Dear God, thank you for all that you've given us. Inspire us to pay forward things that you've given us so that we might bring hope and joy to others. Amen. Okay, and can you stand up? We're going to do the peace of Christ. Can you do this hand? Please, ready? On three, we're going to say the peace of Christ be with you always. Ready? One, two, three. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the sign of Christ's peace with one another and at home and text each other and greet each other. Peace, everybody. Thank you. You can go back to your seats.
Let us pray. Lord, you call us to use our gifts wisely, to share them openly, to give generously. Thank you for this celebration of giving. Receive our offerings and help us to remember that all we have comes from you. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who Holy God, you taught us about generosity through sending your son, Jesus, who cared for those in need. In his death and resurrection, his love rippled out to all people. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Through this meal, you generously love your people. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your spirit in your church without end. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated. As we gather for communion this morning, whether we are in person here at church or whether you are at your homes, we trust that God is present whether we are 20 feet or 20 miles apart from one another. So even if you are by yourself, please know that you are not alone. Join us in receiving communion. For those of you here, you will commune at your seats. After I say the Eucharistic words, you will peel the plastic film back to receive the bread. Then you will peel the next layer for the juice. Please put your mask back on after receiving communion. Right after you receive communion, you may discard your cups in the baskets that are located in the aisles here, and you can sanitize your hands right there as well. Uh, and always we remember that if you are not comfortable communing today for any reason, that is okay. God's grace has already been poured out for you. The feast is now ready. Now the body of Christ given for you. blood of Christ shed for you. Please rise as you're able. And may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Loving God, we know your boundless generosity exceeds all that we can desire or deserve. Deliver us from all jealousy and greed, that by your spirit we may respond joyfully to your generosity and may be free to love and serve others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now receive. Oh, go ahead. We are made in the image of God. God is a generous God. We are made to be generous too. Go and be a blessing to others as you serve God with grace filled generous hearts and hands. Amen. Amen. because 
Give generously, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 